this is an introduction to mathematical proofs. In this case, we're going to look at proof by induction. Now, the big question is, when you write an, uh, an equation, if you haven't written just an arithmetic equation, but rather a formula, how do you know it's true? To prove it's false is very easy. All you need is one counterexample, and the whole thing is there's no more validity to what you've written. But you cannot prove something is true by examples, because you might find several convenient examples that look correct, but that one counterexample could be lurking out there, and so you cannot prove by example. Instead, you have to use another technique. Now, if your mathematical formula depends on the natural numbers, in other words, it's something like a recursive definition with an n in it, then you can use what's called proof by induction. So here's the statement of proof by induction. The mathematical statement, your equation, is true if the statement is true when n equals 1. Whoops. That's the if it's true when n equals 1. It has to be true for the first one. Then there's a procedure to show that if it is true for any number n, it is also true for the next one. The analogy is dominoes. So the idea is that you would have um, a bunch of dominoes set up here. Well, of course it should be the same size, etc. And if the second part here says that this, if this domino fell over, it would hit that one. In other words, the proof of this, the truth of this, would guarantee the truth of, truth of that. This one would fall over, it would make the next one true. So we have a bunch of dominoes all set up in the right order, in the right spacing, so that each one, no matter how far out you go, will always make the next one true. Then the fact that n1 is true means you set off this cascade of falling dominoes by knocking this one over, that makes 2 true, 2 falls into 3, makes 3 true, 3 falls into 4, makes 4 true, etc. Here's an example. Here's the statement. I'm going to say that if I add up all the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, all up to n, that's the same as n times n plus 2 over 2. Well, that might be handy, especially if I'm adding the first 164 million. It'd be nice to have that little formula, but I need to prove it's true. It does depend on the counting numbers and the natural numbers in. So first step in the proof by induction is to set n equal 1 and see if it's even true for the first one. That means, now this is tricky, when n equals 1 on this left-hand side, it means pick the first element. On the right-hand side, it means substitute n equal 1 for all the n's that appear over there. Let me say that again. n equal 1 means different things on each side. When n equals 1 on this side, on the left-hand side, it means pick the first element in the list. Over after the equal sign, it means substitute n equal 1 into that formula. And here's what I've done here. I picked the first element, so that's 1. On the other side, I have n times n plus 2, so that I have to put 1's here and a 1 here, and I add up, and I get 1 equals 3 over 2. This is not true. This is false, so you can stop and don't have to do all the algebra of step two. Never forget this step because it might save you a lot of work. Some things are true in the second step but aren't true in the first. Right. Don't let this in confuse you when you're picking doing this first step. Now what I'm going to do here are the two examples that are given in the homework. One of these homework examples will be on the exam. This means you do not have to sit and rack your brain trying to prove all kinds of uh, being able to do all kinds of proofs. Unfortunately, the time is too short for us to do that. So here's the first example from the homework. We have this series on on the left hand side, two plus four plus six plus on a and remember two n if you remember from that earlier lecture, two times n is always an even number. So that means I'm going to add up a whole bunch of even numbers. And however I add up that's equal to n times n plus 1. Okay, that would be very nice to have that true. Right. So let's see how this works. First we set n equal to 1. Remember in the first step, you pick the first term here. Don't let that fool you. Pick the first term here, and here's your 2. On this side, I have to substitute 1 for the n's. 
So when I substitute the ones in and work it out, two equals two, and yes, this is true, and I can proceed to step two. Step two is a tricky step. So this is step two, and here, okay, you might have to watch this more than once, and if you're really stuck on it, um, you can give me a call, you can send me an email, and I'll try to walk you through it again. All right, here's what you do. You want to show, remember, that any domino will hit the next. Keep thinking that. So you, instead of using the N, which you could just say N equals K. K meaning any of the numbers. All right, so here we go. So I put in that whole original statement, which is 2 plus 4 plus 6, plus on and on and on, 2N equals n times n plus 1. I replace all the n's with k's and I get this equation. I'll put this highlight over here, 1. So I get this and I assume it is true. So I'm assuming this is true. And I want to show if this will prove the next is true. In other words, I'm trying to show that the dominoes are close enough together. So what I do is I look at the next term. That means I advance the counter from k to k plus 1. So I go back to this original statement and every place there's an n, I put k plus 1, k plus 1, k plus 1. It takes a lot of parentheses and you have to be careful. Now, how to prove that the truth of this makes this true is very, very tricky many times. And I'm showing you how it's done in the next, in these um, two examples and it will be the same way. Here's what I do here. I recognize that the term right before this term was that term because all of these are lined up in order. This is the trick right here. Okay, so I'm going to write that out. It was 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 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 2k plus 2k plus 1. The term right before the k plus 1 term was a k term and it was added in. Okay. All of this is just a statement here. So I can take the 2 plus 4 plus 6 all the way up to 2k and replace it by k times k plus 1. And now I'm done. So worrying about these parentheses correctly, I work out the algebra on each side, and here are the steps right here, and I come up with k squared plus 3k plus 2 on the left-hand side, k squared plus 3k plus 2 on the right-hand side. This statement is now true, proved to be true. We're going to do exactly the same t technique for the other homework problem. And again, all you have to do is reproduce these proofs on the homework and on the test. Of course, even though you have to reproduce the proofs, if you are, if you don't understand at least something of what you're doing, you'll become hopelessly lost in all these subscripts and k plus ones and k's, and you won't be able to do it. So let's try it again, and I, I think this time will be you'll you'll get it. All right. So here is the mathematical statement we want to prove. This says if I add up all the odd numbers, and remember this is going to be on the test again, 2n are the e all the even numbers, and 2, I'm sorry, 2n minus 1 are all the odds. So I just abbreviate it. I just use 2n minus 1 to show that that's going to be my next, my term. It's all going to be odd numbers. So here's the statement. You don't have to derive the statement. It's given to you. All right? To see if it's true, step 1, set n equal 1 and see if it's true. N equal 1 means pick the first term on this side. Here's my 1. Over here, substitute. So now I have 1 squared. Well, 1 squared equals 1, so this is true, and we can proceed to step 2. So now in step 2, you set N equal K. So go back to the original statement, which is 1 plus 3 plus 5, on and on and on, to 2N minus 1 equals N squared and I take every n and I turn it into a k. So I just make that statement again. I'm going to call that equation 1. And I assume that this is true. And I want to see if it, the truth of this statement, will make the next one true. For the next one, I advance the counter to k plus 1. Go back to the original statement right here, and every place there was an n, put a k plus 1. Okay, so here was an n. Whoops, I had the marker, sorry. Here was an n, I put a k plus 1. Better use parentheses. Here was an n squared, I put a k plus 1 squared. 
and now we're going to use for this proof exactly the same thing we used for the other proof. We recognize the term right before the k plus 1 term was the k term because all of these are in order. So I'll write that in. All right. Here were all the preceding terms and this was the new term I added in. Okay. So this is a rewrite of statement 2. All I did was rewrite it. But I recognize that what I have marked in yellow here is this equation here and because it's true I can substitute k squared for it. So all of this gets telescoped down to k squared. I still have the term, this term, and then I have the k plus 1 squared on the other side. In that case, just use algebra to expand both sides, and you find that both sides are indeed equal, so this is true. I'm going to give you here one more example. It is not on the homework. It is not on the test. If you look at this, maybe you'll get a better understanding of proof by induction. If it's too confusing, just don't even look at this. Right? So what I'm going to do is prove by induction that a half, a fourth, an eighth, on and on, one over two to the n is less than one. So the first thing I do, again, is set n equal one, n to equal one, and see if it's true. So n equal one on this side means pick the first element. There's my one half, and I wrote that here. And there's nothing to substitute over here. Is it true? Is one half less than one? Yes, this is true. We can proceed to step two. So in step two, we set n equal k. We go back to the original statement, which is one half, one fourth, one eighth, over all of the evens is less than one. And we set the n equal to k. There's only one, so we set that equal to k. I call that sharp. Before I was calling things equation one, so we'll call that equation one. All right. Now I assume this is true, and I want to see if the this will make the next term true. So I set n equal k plus one. So I go back to the original statement, and every place there was an n, there's only one, I put k plus one. So I want to know, is this true if this statement is true? Before, we did the trick of recognizing that the previous terms, um, we used that idea of saying all the terms up to here were, were the k terms and substituting from equation one. In this case, you do something different, and I just want to show you this so that you don't think that all proofs are the same. In fact, if you can find a proof, something that hasn't been proved before, and by your cleverness or genius, prove that it is true, you can write a paper and submit it to a mathematics journal. Maybe even get your name on it, on the proof. Okay, here's what you do in this case. I'm going to multiply by one half. So I take this, whoop, that was k plus one. I multiply all of this by one half. No, wait a minute, that was right. Uh, see how confused I am? Okay, leave it like that. I take equation one and I multiply by half. So I have to multiply both sides of the equation by a half. So this is 1 times a half, and here you would have, when you carry this through, a fourth, right, an eighth, a sixteenth, and this would be 1 over 2k plus 1. Let me show you that on the next page. at this point I've reproduced the equation that I had on the other page. So what I have here is the statement that I know to be true. This is the n equal k statement that I assumed to be true, not no, assumed to be true. I multiply both sides of it by a half and I get this statement because 
one half times two to the k plus one would be one over two, and one uh, plus one over two to the k gives you one over two to the k plus one. What I was trying to prove was that one half plus one fourth plus on and on plus one over two to the k plus one was less than one. I was trying to prove this. Well, I've got by doing this step, I have everything here except I'm missing the half, and this is a half less, so I'm going to add a half into both sides. And now I get exactly the statement I was trying to prove, and it's less than one half plus one half, which is one. So this is a little more complicated proof, but has the same idea. QED is a Latin abbreviation that you can write at the, at the end of proofs. It means that which was intended to be proved has been demonstrated. People don't do it as much as they used to. Sometimes they write other symbols at the bottom, but that's what QED means. And there's a note in it on the written lectures.